Welcome back. In the last video, you learned the reason you see lattice fringes is due to phase contrast. In this video, we'll focus on the Moray fringes and touch upon the Fresnel fringes. Both Moray fringes and Fresnel fringes are also caused by phase contrast. There are two types of Moray fringes. The first type is called translational Moray fringes. You can see if you move one set of lattice planes up, the Moray fringes are also moving up. Notice that the spacing of the Moray fringes does not change in this case. The second type is called rotational Moray fringes. As the angle changes, you can see the direction and the spacing of the fringes will change. To see Moray fringes, you don't need the straight lattice planes. You can also use circles. This is just one fun example to show you. In TEM, because the lattice planes are straight, so we'll use the straight lattice fringes to show you how we can connect the spacing of the lattice planes to the spacing of the Moray fringes. Looking at the translational Moray fringes first, assume we have two sets of lattice planes laying on top of each other. The D spacings are D1 and D2. In reciprocal space, there will be G1 and G2. G is equal to 1 over D. Then, in reciprocal space, the G value for the Moray fringes is simply equal to G2 minus G1. Looking at the real space, you can substitute D by 1 over G and get the expression here. What this tells you is, if you know the D spacing for one set of planes, and if you know the spacing of the Moray fringes, you can easily calculate the D spacing of the second set of planes. Moving to the rotational Moray fringes. In this case, we assume we have only one type of lattice planes, but the top layer is rotated against the bottom layer. The spacing of the Moray fringes is a function of the rotational angle beta. It is simply d, the lattice spacing, over 2 sine half beta. What this tells you is by looking at the spacing of the Moray fringes, you can easily calculate the rotational angle of top and the bottom layers. Here are some examples. The first is from my research when I was working with Professor Hemker. The matrix here is boron carbide. The precipitates are aluminum nitride. If you look at this precipitate here, you see these bright, dark, bright, dark stripes, and these are the Moray fringes. You can also see Moray fringes from this precipitate here. For the TEM image on the right, I found it online. It was published by Lel and the co-authors in Scientific Report in 2016. They looked at the overlapping boron nitride nano sheets. Again, you can see these more ray fringes. Extending from one dimensional lattice fringes to two dimensional lattice patterns, more ray fringes will evolve into more ray patterns. The example is from Xiaodong Xu's group, and they were looking at bilayer graphene. If you rotate one layer against another, you will create these beautiful Moray patterns. By measuring the spacing of the Moray patterns, you can work out the rotational angle. I'll just use one slide to talk about the Fresnel fringes. Fresnel fringes are also caused by the phase contrast. We use Fresnel fringes to reveal the small bubbles or very small voids in materials. For materials in nuclear applications, when these materials are irradiated, helium bubbles 1 to 2 nanometers in size or even smaller in size can form. Because those bubbles are extremely small, they are very difficult to image. One thing you can do is to go slightly over focus or under focus to bring out the Fresnel fringes. When you over focus, the bubble will appear to be dark, but the Fresnel fringe will be bright. When you under-focus, the bubble will be bright, but the Fresnel fringe will be dark. The rule of thumb is when you're imaging 1 to 2 nanometers bubbles, you can set the defocus value to 0.5 to 1 micron to achieve the optimum imaging condition. In this video, you have learned two types of fringes, Moray fringes and Fresnel fringes. In the next video, we'll introduce another type of fringes, the fringes caused by stacking faults.